Okay, so this is going to be the second part. If you haven't seen the first part, it's probably better to watch the first part. This is the second part of my analysis as a person diagnosed with NPD, looking at uh, Lori Vallow Dayfell. Okay. Um, in the last video, I kind of gave some of the background, you know, basic sort of like if, if, if her personality is like a sandwich, I sort of made the most basic sort of like the bread and the, and the, the meat and the cheese, basically, basically um, just kind of combining um, aspects of her religious background, um, her temperament, and then um, some kind of signs that I saw that maybe she has sort of um, kind of a, a real vicious hypervigilance and a tendency to really over escalate and dominate. Okay. On top of, of this kind of, um, identification with beauty and status, upper middle class status. Okay. So that's kind of like the basics and then just kind of adding more to it because, you know, to, to have a personality disorder, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to commit a major crime. You might just have a kind of a rocky life, you know, but to get into major crime, a lot more has to go wrong. Um, so in this case, um, kind of getting into what more was going on with her um, beyond just her basic personality. Um, basically, from what I understand, just listening to uh, interviews with family members, with friends, she had kind of a dark side where sometimes like in moments, she would make comments that would sound kind of ominous. For example, um, you know, in the Mormon church, they, they have their theory of what the apocalypse is going to be like or what the, the second coming and all this. And she would often, she would sometimes make remarks like, wouldn't it be better for us just to die now so we could go to the next whatever, you know, um, just kind of like offhanded comments. And somehow, sometimes I think in offhanded comments, people reveal sort of like uh, real truth, you know. So it sounds like on top of having... Um, on top of having, you know, basically what I would think of is kind of a, a cluster B personality disorder, probably kind of on the narcissistic side. I don't know if she was fully diagnosable, but it doesn't matter. Just having the features is bad enough. Um, but, you know, kind of having a kind of a, a narcissistic sort of a platform, but then add to that, that it seems like in, in kind of like um, off guard moments, you know, she did have deep down inside kind of um kind of a, a fantasy of, of sort of dying and going to a better place, you know, or wouldn't it be easier to just kind of let go of this pain in the ass world and go to a better world kind of thing. So, you know, that's almost to me kind of a, um, maybe a little bit of a low grade depression or kind of a, um, something underneath a kind of something kind of dark, something kind of destructive. Let's just say that. I don't know if I want to call it depression, but I would say it's kind of destructive, kind of uh, not just self-destructive, but sort of like she would say us as a family, you know. So I think maybe um, she probably didn't have very good separation of her identity, uh, her own identity versus the identity of her children. Her children probably were like part of her identity. So if she was going to go, everybody was going to go with her, sort of. Um, at least that was kind of like sort of a, a recurrent uh, kind of a, a little tell, you know, that, that she was, she had kind of like a dark side, you know, and a lot of times when people put off really, really clean, really nice exteriors, you know, people very upper middle class, very shiny, sometimes underneath there can be some pretty dark stuff, you know, it depends, but at least in her case, you know, she really did have kind of a, a little bit of a darkness and kind of a, you know, signs of potential destruction, you know, even just in the abstract, you know. The second thing I noticed that, that was really troubling was a weird relationship with her brother, where basically going back to the Mormon idea of it's us against the world, us Mormons against the world, and where Mormons in their old traditions, you know, maybe not so much today, but in their, you know, in their, their historical traditions, the Mormons really do identify as righteous outlaws, okay, and that's, that's very important. And I think her and her brother Alex, um, kind of felt together that kind of righteous outlaw spirit against the world, okay? But you add on top of that, the fact that it looks like her brother Alex had a very bad car accident when he was 16, and maybe also just kind of an immature personality, but just kind of combining all those things together, was a person who, in his adult life, according to his family, he was really very adolescent and kind of irresponsible, and also 
maybe potentially sort of, um, you know, if, if given the chance, we could really do some pretty, pretty aggressive things, you know. Um, the one incident, you know, where, where Lori, Lori wanted him to, or, you know, Lori sort of egged him on to uh, tase, you know, one of her ex-husbands and the genitals and ended up going to, to prison for that, um, Alex did. So basically, you know, it almost sounds like he was more than happy to, to be violent, you know, if, you know, if, this, if he had an excuse, basically. So you see right there, very bad constellation between the brother and the sister, because the brother is obviously capable of doing really extreme things. And both of them seem to have it kind of spring loaded, you know, ready for action, sort of the potential for violence if necessary, you know. Um, now, I do, I do think that at least at that point, um, up until the very end, I think Lori probably would never have been violent without provocation. Okay, so, you know, just to be fair, she wasn't like uh, a serial killer just hunting for people to destroy. I think she would have to feel uh, under, under attack, you know, or justified, you know. And that goes back to the Mormon thing. You know, everything with the Mormons has to be justified, righteous. You know, she's not going to do anything that doesn't have justification, at least in some twisted way, you know. But definitely with the brother, you had uh, a very bad constellation uh, between a brother who has no inhibition, no, really doesn't have a, a normal, um, what do you call it, like, uh, like impulse control. And then a sister who at times could be capable of sort of forming an alliance and kind of egging them on together to, to really do something spectacular, you know. And, uh, and then, of course, Lori, it's just like the perfect storm because Lori also is an, as a super escalator, very dominant super escalator. She escalates and she'll over escalate and dominate other people. So this is where we get to the, the first tragedy. And, uh, and, it, and, you know, in another video, I'll talk about a very similar Mormon disaster, which is the, uh, the Jody Arias. Okay. And that is a Mormon story. I mean, you can't take the Mormon out of it, even though Jordy, Jody wasn't born a Mormon. She got sort of identified with the Mormons and got tied up into that stuff. And so, you know, it, I think it's um, not, a, not a completely related case, but very similar. And that was another case of a super escalator. It turns out that Jody was a super escalator, you know, and you never know. And in, in life, Sometimes the quietest, uh, you know, unsuspecting people could be very escalatory um, and very dominant in the right moments. Okay, so at least with Lori, um, there's no question looking back, you know. Um, so basically, um, the problem that, that comes up with Lori, the, and, and this is why I, I tied into Jody Arias, because I think with, with, uh, with uh, his name was Alexander, um, the, the boyfriend Alexander, I can't remember his first name, but anyway, um, Jody Aris's boyfriend, right before he got killed, he really escalated on Jody. Okay. And then Jody super escalated on him. Okay. So sometimes we never know the warning signs, but some, there are some people in this world that when they're in enough crisis, you do not want to, you don't want to get them into an escalating contest because they'll, they'll really escalate, you know, like, Classic example with a woman, you know, some guy's a macho guy and he starts getting really escalatory with a woman. And if it's the wrong woman and she's not strong enough to kick his ass physically, she'll poison him. You know what I mean? I mean, she'll find a way or she'll do something nasty legally to make the guy get the guy arrested or get him in trouble or, you know, whatever. So basically, I think that just like um, like Travis Alexander probably underestimated Jody Arias, I think sadly uh charles Vallow probably underestimated how crazy his wife was and this is interesting because charles was aware that she was going crazy he was definitely aware that, that she was having some kind of life crisis like a midlife crisis because she was she was getting really delusional and apparently she was acting very unstable getting very aggressive and the relationship with charles was going very badly and so charles had had warning signs that she was going crazy but he underestimated how escalatory she could be okay he just underestimated. He, he was out of his depth and he didn't realize he, he was no match for for lori in terms of ruthlessness he just he just had no idea so he probably was just focusing on the delusions and the fact that she even made comments that she would kill him and even has some idea that she could be dangerous but i think he did underestimate um uh, how escalatory she could be and he made the crucial mistake 
this is this is what what I think killed Charles Vallow. It wasn't the delusions. If Charles Vallow had just said, you know what, um, I give up. I'm gonna I'm gonna forfeit everything. I'm just gonna get my belongings, or maybe hey, you can keep my belongings. I'm just gonna go to Houston and I'll we'll separate and you go your way, I'll go my way. He could have he could have survived, I think, that way. And maybe also gotten himself off the the blacklist, you know, because Laurie had this list of people that were like, you know, zombies or whatever. And I think Charles Vallow could have, if he had played his cards right and been very gracious, he probably could have at least gotten off the, the radar of, you know, of people to be, you know, to be like maybe killed or whatever. So I think he just, um, he himself, I think Charles Vallow was a very emotional person. And I think he had a lot of pride and he was actually hurt because I think he was in love with Lori and he was very hurt that the relationship was, was, uh, you know, was, was, uh, was being you know the relationship was was ending basically and i think he was you know very too personally hurt by the breakup and by laurie's attitude and craziness and he sort of felt like that that terrible instinct with some people you know where you feel like you want to put people right and put them in their place and that was a big mistake with laurie you don't do that she she was a super escalator and you could you couldn't put her in place and so um Charles Vallow, he was just outraged, you know, how she could be having an affair, she could be going through all these, uh, you know, delusions, religious delusions, thinking she's a goddess, whatever. But then he made that mistake of, of really trying to put her in a place and trying to connive and, and try to make contact with, uh, with Tammy Daybell up in Idaho and basically try to like reveal the affair and trying to like, you know, sort of trying to out Lori as a crazy person and maybe forcing her to get a psych evaluation and just all these crazy things. And I think Lori feeling so much attack, you know, because, because Charles Vallow was trying to like, like shine the light on her craziness. He, he, he didn't realize he was dealing with a person that would not tolerate being, uh, being sort of like, um, you know, I guess, she wouldn't tolerate someone trying to put authority over her. Okay. She was not raised to have authority, anybody to have authority over her. She was raised to be a very supremacist. And also she looked down on Charles, I think, because he was not born a Mormon. Okay. I mean, she never, I don't know if she said that, but I think it's implicit that she came from a tradition of, of very righteous outlaws and, uh, and Charles was not going to be uh, putting authority on, on Laurie. So I think, you know, I think at that point, you know, once he had tried so many times to sort of put her in place and sort of, you know, kind of out her as a, as a crazy person, I think she, you know, whether subconsciously or not, I think she just knew that she was going to end up destroying this guy. She, she probably to make herself feel justified, she framed it in terms of, well, we're going to get rid of his evil spirit. We're always framing it in righteous terms, but I think psychologically she was going to destroy him because she, he, he would not have authority and dominate her. She would dominate him. You know, so basically that's, that's how I think, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not in any way blaming Charles. I just think he made a misjudgment, you know, um, and we do this, all of us make misjudgments, you know, sometimes, um, people have, you know, people have sort of a presentation, a public presentation where if you don't know them very well, or even if you're married to them, you don't know really what they're capable of because they, they always put on the presentation of being like the good housewife or whatever. And I just think that even though Charles knew that there could be some danger, I think he underestimated how dominant and how escalatory uh, Laurie could be. So he, unfortunately, like Travis, like uh, Travis Alexander, he made that mistake of getting in a rage and an outrage and trying to, to out Laurie as a crazy person, you know, that big mistake. And uh, basically, you know, she would just destroy him, you know. Now, granted, I do think, you know, you can't take away that she was also in the midst of a terribly, terribly delusional midlife crisis. I mean, that did add to it. Um, so in the next video, I'll kind of try to kind of summarize. But basically, um, basically, you know, um, Lori, on top of being very escalatory, she did have, you know, kind of a a theme of death or destruction. So she was actually a very dangerous person. It's just that in the right situation, it came out with the with the escalation and the, the provocation from her from her um, second to last husband. <laughs> in the next video, I'll, I'll keep talking.